So um, the ISTQB program has three levels uh, defined in it, and uh, those are the um, foundation, advanced, and expert. And I'll explain a little bit more about uh, each of those. But for the most part, I want to focus in this presentation on the advanced uh, program and uh, the benefits that people can achieve by uh, getting to that, that level of, uh, of certification in, in their uh, uh, testing career. Uh, also, the benefits that accrue to organizations that have uh, em employed professional testers who have uh, advanced certification. So. Um, I'm going to try to familiarize you with the overall ISTQB program certifications in general if you're not uh, familiar with, with uh, either or both. But as I said, I'll, I will focus on the advanced level certification and the um, kind of abilities that you will need to have in order to gain the certificates and thus what, what you'll be able to, uh, to do. And so specifically, I'll look at things like the, the overall ISTQB program and how it's um, performed to date. Um, and uh, getting into the advanced syllabus, the, the structure of it, the origins of it, and then the three modules that are in the advanced syllabus, the advanced test manager, advanced test analyst, and advanced technical test analyst, and what each of those means. So um, I think an important thing to um, understand about certification is that certification is not the same as training. Um, there is, certificate, there is training to support certification in, in most cases for most certifications. It's true whether you look at uh, um, CompTIA's uh, Security Plus or um, something um, you know, like one of Microsoft's certifications or uh, Mercury uh, tool certification. But the certification, um, any sort of certification, including tester certification, there should be some objective and carefully designed exam that is uh, based on a clearly defined set of what are referred to as learning objectives, which are, are basically things that you should know and be able to do uh, at certain levels of sophistication. And so the exam, um, if it is a valid exam, and there's a, a statistical meaning to that, but basically it means that you, you can't your odds of passing if you have not mastered the learning objectives are very low, and your odds of failing if you have are very low as well. So a statistically valid exam will measure your professional capabilities uh, against those learning objectives. Um, now, for the ISDQB's um, approach to developing tester certification, uh, a number of elements of it. One is the practical, real-world focus. Uh, by Developing the certification uh, bodies of knowledge at the different levels um, with the help of practitioners and consultants who are engaged in uh, working as testers uh, and helping testers around the world uh, in a variety of industries, you get a, a very practical, uh, non-academic uh, kind of thing. So it's not... Um, it's not a college program, if you will. It's not something of, of, oh, you know, let's talk about these sort of ivory tower concepts. These are every concept that you'll find in the ISTQB program is one that has proven its worth in actual practice. The certification has uh, levels. Um, so there are some certifications where you, you get it and then you're, you're done, and that's, that's it. Um, but in testing, as in many fields, there are stages that one goes through in your career, and uh, the program is designed to support those stages uh, to um, get people the appropriate uh, support um, in terms of guiding what they need to know as they advance through their, their career. Um, <clears throat> the ICQB is promoting the software testing profession as a specialized field of uh, work and knowledge uh, by defining what people need to know, um, trying to foster a sense that amateur testing, testing done by people who don't know the fundamentals is, uh, is not a good uh, approach. As I said, the ISTQB uh, program has uh, uh, many experts involved, practitioners, consultants, trainers, and academics around the world from uh, each of the 40 plus countries. Um, so you really get a, a broad cross-section of uh, what's actually uh, going on in, in the real 
world what the real best practices are. And in the ISTQB approach, um, training is not required to take the exams. There are some uh, certifications, including tester certifications, that conflate these two things, a certification and training, and you're only able to take the exam if you've sat a particular vendor's training course. But the ISTQB is vendor neutral. And um, if you want to self-study, you can self-study. If you want to take an e-learning course, uh, you can take an e-learning course. If you want to take a live course, you can do that. If you want to read a book, you can do that. However you want to prepare for the exam is fine. And really, that, that point, along with the broad cross-section of people involved, uh, distinguishes the ISTQB from uh, any of the other testing certifications that you might look at. So I encourage you, if you're evaluating different tester certifications, to keep these, these points, particularly the last two points, the, the number of people involved in creating the bodies of knowledge, uh, the, the issue of training in mind. Okay, here is the uh, composition of the ISTQB. I realize it's a little bit of an eye chart because you can see that there's a very large number of boards. Um, <clears throat> and uh, we have boards really around the world on all six uh, populated continents. Um, so, you know, very good uh, representation. Uh, it's a very uh, democratic and flexible organization um, where the different national boards adapt and, and deliver the program as appropriate to their market. Um, the bodies of knowledge, including the advanced uh, syllabus, which we'll look at, are um, created by working parties, which are composed of delegates from these different national boards. And if you were to look at any given working party uh, and the kind of um, expertise and experience in that working party, uh, very typically you'll find that you're, you're tapping more than 2,000 person years of testing experience um, to develop things like the glossary and the bodies of knowledge and so forth. Okay, so the foundation uh, certificate, for those of you not familiar with it, uh, is an entry level certification. Uh, it's designed uh, for, for anybody who has an interest in pursuing um, a career in testing. And so that's, that's exactly what that means, and, and it, it needs, needs to be thought of as such, that uh, you're certifying somebody as, as understanding the broad uh, fundamental best practices and key concert, concepts in software testing, and, and uh, you're giving them a foundation for professional growth, um, and, and that's it. Now, that's not to say that there isn't a tremendous amount of value in that, um, and there certainly is. But we would hope, we, the ISDQB, would hope that everybody who uh, takes a foundation exam, passes it, and decides to make a career in testing would eventually progress to the advanced certification for reasons that will become clear as I explain it. But at the foundation level, we're looking at fundamentals of testing, uh, how testing fits into the software lifecycle, static techniques like reviews, um, various practical white box and black box test design techniques, basic test management, including bug management, and uh, testing tools. Now, um, as I said, training is not required, but just to give you an idea of what's the volume of, of material covered, uh, it is, in spite of being foundational, it is quite significant in that uh, a syllabus-based training course will uh, typically be three to five days. Uh, the course that we offer is a four-day uh, course with a lot of hands-on elements, so it's quite, uh, uh, quite extensive given that it is a foundational type of uh, course. And we're currently, as it shows here on the slide, we're on uh, version uh, 2007. Version 2010, uh, which was an incremental improvement over 2007, is uh, just now being released and should be active later this year. 